again, welcome everyone. Uh, what a great day. He says, you look beautiful. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Okay, you jump right in. Good. <laughs> he was quick to do that. All right, come on, let's do this. You can all be seated. Well, on behalf of Jacob and Sierra, welcome. Thank you for being here. It is an honor and privilege to be standing here in the presence of God today as we observe and celebrate Jacob and Sierra's commitment to one another. We are all witnesses of this sacred promise they are making, and it will be up to us to remind them of this special day <clears throat> and the lifelong commitment they have made to one another. Over the past couple of months, the three of us have spent time talking about the importance of having a relationship with God. We established that the foundation of this marriage should be honesty, trust, and commitment. And if for some reason you don't have those three things as part of that foundation, then it will be hard to hold your marriage together. We discussed the seven enemies of marriage, such as disagreement over money, over commitment, core values, and communication. We spent time discussing uh, money, the importance of obeying God with our finances, and being faithful with what He gives us so we can be a blessing to others. And finally, we discussed the rules of engagement, dealing with anger and choosing relationship over conflict always. Anytime you're faced with conflict, remember this scripture found in James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I encourage you to ask God for his help in learning how to listen to one another and think before you speak. You'll be faced with challenges every day, but with the help of God, nothing you face will be too difficult. In the end, it is your love for God and each other that keeps you sustained. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 4 guides us in the meaning of what true love is. It says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love never ends. Now there's many decisions that you and I will make in life. Today, I want to address the two biggest decisions all of us have to face in our lifetime. The first big decision we all have to make is whether or not we will have eternal life. The Bible is clear that all of mankind has the opportunity to make this decision. Not one person, no matter their color, their background, their past hurts or sins, is unqualified to receive the free gift of life that God has promised to all of us. He will forgive you for anything you may have done and give you a new life in Him. Everyone here, including Jacob and Sierra, can be saved from the eternal death and brought into a relationship with Jesus for eternal life. Your place in heaven can only be secured by following what God's Word says in Romans 10.9. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Now, both of you have confirmed to me your decision and commitment to Jesus. And that is the biggest decision you will ever have to make, and you did it. And if anyone here desires to be born again and make that decision, I'll be honored to do that with you later on. So now that each of you have secured a place in heaven through your confession, it's time to make another big decision today here on earth. This decision has to do with your life today on earth. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 18, it says that after Adam was created, he needed someone to do life with him. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Well, I believe that, Sierra, you are just right for Jacob. Today you're making the second most important decision in your life. This means if either of you or anyone in our presence knows any reason why this marriage should not be performed, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. And now we'll do the vows. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> do you, Jacob, take this woman to be your lawful way to wife, to love and respect her, honor and cherish her, in health and in sickness, in prosperity and adversity, and leaving all others to keep yourself unto her, so long as you both shall live. I do. Okay. Do you, Sierra, in like manner solemnly agree to receive this man as your lawful wedded husband, to love and respect him, to live with him in all faith and tenderness, in health and sickness and prosperity, in adversity, and leaving all others to keep yourself unto him, so long as you both shall live? I do. All right. Do you have a ring? May this beautiful token and pledge symbolize the purity and never-ending love you have for your chosen companion in life. 
Jacob, we'll start with you. Repeat after me. This ring I give to you. This ring I give to you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Okay. Okay, Sierra. This ring I give to you. This ring I give to you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Now the couple will light the unity candle. Mark 10, 6 says, But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Lord, thank you for Jacob and Sierra. Thank you for their lives that are being united today in front of their family, friends, and most importantly, you. I pray for your provision. Give them everything they need to serve and honor you. Help them to get through life with patience, grace, love, and understanding towards one another. Continue to provide for them financially, emotionally, and spiritually. And thank you, Jesus, that you care about everything in our lives, and especially theirs. And I pray that they continue to honor you by how they speak, serve, and love the people around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well. Inasmuch as you've agreed to enter the marriage relationship and have given and received a ring and token of your faith, I now, by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the gospel, declare that Jacob and Sierra, our husband and wife, according to the great state of Ohio. Jacob, what do you think? <laughs> you may kiss the bride, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jacob Ross!